From KPCC, this is AudioVision. Okay, here we go. We humans are hoarders. We collect all kinds of things. But why? What's the reason for saving all this stuff? The Turkish novelist Orhan Pamuk says it's because the world is chaos. And that makes us sad. Collecting things makes us feel like we're in control. When we all collect together, we end up with archives, museums. Here's Orhan. Once you put two, two or three, five objects in an exhibit, in a museum, these objects tell a story. In a place like LA's Natural History Museum, some of those stories are on display, but most of them aren't. We met up with Jim Dines at a part of the museum that a lot of people don't get to see. It's a warehouse down the street from a meat packing plant in the most industrial part of LA. Have you had people just try to come in? Yeah, it's usually people looking for a job. Like, this isn't the kind of warehouse you think it is. <laughs> they call it the Whale Warehouse. Dines is the main mammal guy for the museum, and he's kind of like the head librarian here. Instead of being a library of books, the museum is a library of specimens. So everything has a catalog number and everything is organized in, in a certain way, what we call a phylogenetic way. Phylogenetic means that instead of Dewey and his decimals, the museum organizes animals from primitive to advanced. The platypus comes first and we humans come last. Most of that collection is stored in the museum. But just like a library of books, there are things that don't fit on the shelves quite neatly. So there's the oversize section at the very end. And this warehouse is basically the oversize collection of mammals that, that don't fit in our cabinets at the, the main museum. Whale bones are the biggest thing in the building, but the warehouse is packed with all kinds of mammals. Hippopotamus, topi, and gazelle. This warehouse is home to more marine mammal skeletons than any place on Earth, except the Smithsonian. Beaked whales, bowhead whales, sperm whale skulls. They have somewhere around 5,000 specimens, and the vast majority of those are dolphin skulls. But why do they need so many? Well, because science. In the early days of, of museum collections, it really was like Noah's Ark, and they would collect two of each kind, you know, a male and a female. But after a while, we figured out that having two of each is, is not enough because a species is really a, a, a complicated thing. Think about us. We come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, skin colors. We're young, we're old. It's the same with whales or dolphins. If you have a large series of skulls from the same species or, or related species, you kind of combine all of those measurements into a, a huge matrix and you can run statistical analyses on them. And that helps you differentiate between subspecies or populations or, or even species. They're compiling a story about dolphins that goes back decades and tells us what's happening in the ocean now. What kind of story? They're trying to figure out things like how dolphins and whales survive in warming oceans, or why hundreds of dolphins sometimes die off in a single month. That sort of system takes thousands of specimens. So I'm kind of afraid to ask, but where do you get thousands of dolphin skeletons? From the beach. So this is where things get a little gross. If you get queasy looking at blood, you might want to fast forward. That's David Janiger. Whenever a dead dolphin or whale washes up on the beach in Los Angeles or Orange County, he picks it up and brings it back here. So we're getting as much as data as we can before we discard the animal. We will be saving the head. He takes 48 measurements of the dolphin. 27 and a half, 10, 30. Nose to fin, nose to tail, weights of the organs, etc. They send off parts of the dolphin to labs to understand why the animal died. There's the heart. It's not beating, so it's dead. To make a dolphin head into a dolphin skull, you need to get the meat off the bones. That's called maceration. And there's two ways they do it here, both equally gross. They use flesh-eating bugs called dermistead beetles, or they soak them in water for a long time until the flesh falls off. 
And here's the one thing we haven't told you yet. The other reason this warehouse is next to a meat packing plant. The aroma within the warehouse is very unique. So think of kind of uh, oil that is rancid on top of um, rotting mammal smell. It gets really bad in the summer. That's when these huge whale skulls start oozing oil. This blue whale skull has been here since it got hit by a ship in 1985, and it's still leaking. It's the biggest natural thing in the museum's entire collection. But everything that washes ashore can't fit in the whale warehouse. It's really difficult to uh, predict what kinds of things are going to be needed for the, the next study a year from now or 10 years from now. So we really just do our best to collect as much as we can within reason. But as you can see, it takes up a lot of space. This isn't Noah's Ark. Two skeletons don't define a species. What makes a species? You know, what makes this kind of dolphin different from this kind of dolphin? Oh, right there, right there, right there, right there! Most dolphins that chase boats off the California coast have a really boring name. They're called common dolphins. And that's what we called them for decades. The man who builds the whale warehouse collection proved that there are actually two species of common dolphin. One with a long beak and one with a short beak. Not so common after all. Sure. That's just one chapter of the story. The warehouse is full of them, and some of them are still on the shelves, waiting to be told. People have been collecting these specimens for hundreds of years now. This is our record of life on Earth. AudioVision is a member-supported service of KPCC, Public Radio for Southern California. It's produced by Grant Slater and me, May Ryan. The associate producer is Maya Sugarman. The sound design on this video is by Stephanie Smith, and the voice you heard in our intro is Sage Price. If you like this video, you can subscribe to us on YouTube or Vimeo, or like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. We are AudioVision. Audio